About to leave, already packing. Come with me, I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know. What are you doing? Smiling. <laughs> Stop doing that. It's very annoying. Yes, that. Yeah, yeah, it's very annoying. <sighs> okay. So I'm Tony. And I'm Michael. And welcome to our channel. Today we're going to talk about Frogtown. What's Frogtown? Well, we, we were there, so you should know what it is. Yeah, and they don't know. I'm asking the question for them. <laughs> right, okay. Well, uh, Frogtown is a neighborhood in Los Angeles. Where in Los Angeles? It's by the LA River near downtown LA. Yeah, oh, I was there. Yes, we, we were both there. So, um, yeah, today we're going to be all about... <laughs> yeah. We're going to be all about Frogtown. Um, Ribbit. So why did we go to Frogtown? Why did we decide to do that? Well, because we went to the bike path at the LA River. Yeah, the LA River bike trails. So they're, so obviously on our channel, we're gonna be talking about a lot of activities, um, yeah, things to do, places to go, neighborhoods to explore. And one of those is going to be, today is gonna to be, is gonna be Frogtown, obviously. And um, the reason why we chose Frogtown was because there is the LA River bike trail. The LA River flows through Frog, Frogtown, or flows by Frogtown, Frogtown. Um, and along the LA River is the um, Los Angeles River bike trail, right? Yeah. So um, that was basically, Frogtown was our starting point uh, on our little bike ride. Um, so we started in Frogtown, we ended up in? Griffith Park over by the zoo. Oh yeah, exactly. By the train station. Right. So um, so that was our, our start point, and then our end point was the was Griffith Park. So, um, so yeah, so we thought, you know, we would explore Frogtown a little bit as a part of this episode. And it's interesting. Yeah, it's now a sanctuary, which you didn't mention. What do you mean? Well, the area, you know, with um, with the native uh, birds and trees and th that are growing there in the LA River. Well, yeah, so the Frogtown is kind of the southernmost portion of what they call the Glendale Narrows, which is a part of the LA River where in the river itself, it's a unique part of the river because in the river itself there is kind of like a strip of trees and, and um, kind of, it's almost a little bit forested in the middle of the river, right? In the middle of the river. So it's like a little island. It's like... A long island. Not a long a little. Yeah, like a divider on a, on a highway. It's, it's like that, a divider. I think we should back up a little bit and talk about what the LA River is. So um, most of you know the LA River from the movies. Um, you've seen it in Greece. Right, Greece. Uh -huh. um, it's, you've seen it in, a, in in the kind of the film noir era. We, there's a movie called Them. You remember Aunt Them with the ants? The giant ants, yes. The giant ants. That was uh, with uh, James Whitmore, and um, also uh, Point Blank with Lee Marvin. That was film. That was filmed there. Uh, I don't know. I don't either. Um, and Drive with Ryan Gosling. But there's been thousands of other movies where it was it was featured. Those are just some of the the bigger ones. Um, and um, so what happened was in 1938, um, we had kind of, uh, LA had its Katrina, essentially. Um, the LA River overflowed and went into the neighborhoods around it. And 115 people were killed. Do you know that? No. Yeah, 115 people. Disaster, destruction, and death descend on five Southern California counties. Tons of water submerged 30,000 square miles of populous beach and valley towns in the Los Angeles area, leaving 200 persons dead or missing. With property damage estimated at $25 million, what once were streets and boulevards now are raging torrents of swirling flood water.
20,000 persons are reported homeless as the tide undermines dwellings. The specter of disease hovers over the area as sewage systems burst with the rushing water that carries all before it. Railways and all other means of communication are out of commission in the worst storm ever to hit Southern California. Long Beach is under the rush of water that swirls toward the ocean. Path A staff photographer Mervyn Freeman brings exclusive pictures of destruction riding the flood as a North Hollywood bridge falls victim to the elements. People died in that flood. Not as many as Katrina, obviously, but um, a lot of people died. And um, so the Army Corps of Engineers, who was also responsible, by the way, for the levees in um, New Orleans, came in and they basically encased the LA River in concrete. So why did they do that? Do you know? So they can control it, of course. Yeah. Well, yeah, because, um, okay, yeah. I didn't realize that 115 people have died, but I knew the LA River is constantly moving like a like a snake so it's winds it's an alluvial river so, that's what they call an alluvial river okay so it, an alluvial river doesn't stay within its banks it kind of moves around it kind yeah. of moves back and forth so it's kind of the the riverbed is pretty flat right it's pretty wide and flat so the water would kind of find its way in the lowest point right so um, it would kind of move around depending on the situation on the ground. Yeah. And so, and of course, when we would have um, big rainstorms, <clears throat> the river would swell, you know, it would become gigantic and raging. And that's what caused the flood. Of course, the San Fernando Valley, where we live right now, um, was totally flooded. Did you know that? <laughs> no. Yes. <laughs> totally flooded. Um, and that's one of the reasons why so many people died. Yeah. Um, and one of the areas where people would probably recognize if you haven't been to the LA River um, but one of the areas that did get flooded a lot um, giving you a historic landmark Union Station that area there would flood a lot and also Olvera Street uh, because of the LA River before it was contained Olvera Street? in the Olvera Street area oh I didn't know that yeah oh Union Station is just across the street from it yeah, I didn't. I didn't. That's know that where China, the original China, Chinatown used to be. Yeah, but I did not flood it. Yeah, that's why. They. Anyway. I was gonna say that's why they gave that area to the immigrant to the Chinese immigrants because it was a poor area because it was constantly flooding. Oh. Okay. And when they were able to control the river, it became a prime location, and that's when they pushed the Chinese out over overnight pushed them out um, and there was a massacre of 21 young Chinese w when they when the government pushed them out and they took over that area and they, and they placed Union Station there but they, that area used to flood and so it wasn't an area that was prime for any kind of development which is why they gave it to the minorities right so um, so anyway as, as a response to this terrible flood that we had in Los Angeles where so many people died the Army Corps of Engineers came in and uh, they designed, redesigned the river. They basically encased it in concrete. And the reason why they did that was to get the water from the mountains, well, well the flood water coming from the mountains uh, that was going into the river out to the ocean as quickly as possible. Because by encasing it in concrete, you create a smooth surface. There's no friction and it just basically rushes through this channel and goes right, right down to the ocean. I have a question was, and this just popped into my head, I don't know the answer to it, and I don't even know if you would even know the answer to it, but I'm going to ask it anyway, um, because I'm just curious about it. Was Mulholland part of the um, backing in the construction of the L.A. River, the container? Yeah, no, Mulholland, not, this is the Army Corps of Engineers, this is the federal government. No, I understand that, but he also was the one that developed the aqueducts, which is which is um, bringing water to Los Angeles, br bringing water to Los Angeles. But it was also the same concept that the Army Corps of Engineers used 
in um, in containing the LA River. So I just I didn't know if he had a hand mm, in I've it. I've never read as anything well. that he was involved. Okay, just a question. I don't know. Okay. No. Maybe we so, should look into that. I'll put it on the comments. Okay. <laughs> in the yes. suggestion box. This is fun. <laughs> um, so it so, should be. It's a fun channel. Right. It absolutely is. <laughs> Um, so between 1938 and 1960, they encased the river from the San Fernando Valley all the way to the Pacific Ocean. To the road flows through downtown, flows through Long Beach, and it ends up uh, near Long Beach, right into the into the ocean. So, unfortunately, what happened in that was that um, we lost a lot of the habitat and a lot of the wildlife that lived along the river. So we had um, steelhead trout, and we had um, all different kinds of we had crawfish, and we had uh, frogs. Uh, toads and we had egrets and we had all different kinds of birds that were indigenous to the river by the way and one of the casualties of of this was the frogs now one of the reasons why it's called frog town if you didn't know was the frogs used to to live in the mud along the river um, so they would basically the they would lay their their eggs um, there along the river banks and then they would then uh, become tadpoles, and then the tadpoles would make their way up the riverbank and into the neighborhood that's there. And um, so apparently it was kind of a scene. There was like thousands and thousands and thousands of little frogs that would kind of invade the neighborhood. And um, that's how it became known as Frogtown. Yeah, well, frogs, frogs would go into hibernation. So what they do is they dig in the ground mm -hmm. and they spew these like bubbles, which creates a containment around them and that's how they're able to survive um, during the winter and then of course when spring comes and the waterfall um, and that's when they, they they come out of the ground and yeah and they multiply and anyway that, that was kind of interesting okay <laughs> so um, so anyway that's why it's called frog town <laughs> And, um, <laughs> so, yeah, but Frogtown is actually kind of like what the locals call it. It's actually the Elysian Valley. That's the official name for the area. Yeah. Um, and so Frogtown is a part of a larger area called Elysian Valley, but Frogtown itself is about 9,000 people. Did you know that? Why do you keep asking me that? No, I'm just, I'm just throwing <laughs> these things know. out. People are, know that. people might want to, people might be. No, throw it out, but yeah. don't ask me if I know anyway, that. Cause so I about 9,000 people live in Frogtown. And um, so the frogs actually used to live there for, until about the 1980s, and they just kind of disappeared. So they're no longer there. Except there's this one frog that you could see in the video here. One. And there was a gang called the frogs. There was a gang called the frogs? In that area. Yeah, when we went and had the tacos, they said it was called Frog Town because of all the frogs, and there was even a gang from that area, and there's still some there. That, are, that were called the frogs. Don't you pay Why attention? Why would a gang call themselves the frogs? Oh, they like the color green? I don't know. That's but they were very called the strange. Frogs. When we went and got the tacos. Are they like a, are they like a gang? Or what they... was the name of the taco place? Wasn't it something frog? Yeah, it was the frog town. It was frog town tacos. Fro yeah. He said that there was a, also a gang that was called the frogs. Okay. I don't know. Maybe it was the toads. Oh. Um, so I should have said did you know that <laughs> yeah this is where we entered the trail just in front of uh, La Colombe here <clears throat> Um, this is actually called Spokes, um, Spoke Bicycle Cafe, which is really nice. Um, you can actually rent bikes here to ride along the trail. If you don't have your own bike, if you're a visitor and you don't have your own bike, um, you can get your bike here at Spokes, and then you can um, 
have a little a drink or breakfast or something before. There's a little cafe there. Now, when we were there, it was kind of at the height of coronavirus, so um, we didn't see a lot of people um, sitting down and enjoying their, their food and beverages there, but I, I assume that normally during better times, um, this place is jammed with people during the day. Yeah, they didn't allow people to sit and eat there. Yeah, we had to... <clears throat> you had, had to take your meal with you. Yeah, so there's a lot of street art there. By the way, there's a lot of artists that live in the neighborhood. Um, Shepard Ferry, the famous artist Shepard Ferry, um, uh, has a studio there. And also um, Michael Todd is kind of really well known in the neighborhood. So it was actually really kind of a cool spot. Um, so we entered the bike trail there, and then we got on and we we did our little our little ride from um, from there to Griffith Park, which is about thirty minutes, I think, maybe a little bit more than thirty minutes, like forty minutes. Yeah, it was a nice little ride. So yeah. if you're going there and back, you're you're kind of about an hour, hour and a half, which is pretty good. So this is our actual approach. Um, here we are approaching the, the trails. We're kind of getting ready to zoom down. And um, yeah, so this is the beginning. Some of those cafes that we were eating at are there on the, on the left, or we had our coffee out, we're on the left. And then mm -hmm. we go under the bridge here. <coughs> and you kind of, it's interesting, you get an interesting perspective of the city on, on this because you, you see the river there on the right, and some of it's pretty and some of it, I have to say, is not. No. Um, but um, it's a very interesting way to actually see the city as you're kind of... I think of, we're going to be coming back. But you kind of feel like you're not in L.A. when you're on the trail, aren't you? Don't you? Right. You feel... And look at the, the, the trees that are there. It's You can see the, the changing of the color of the trees. Yeah, so we shot this in November, I think. So it was kind of, we're getting into the winter months, so this, these were changing when we, when we actually shot this. November. I mean, come on. How do you love our winters? Yeah, right, Look at exactly. That. Can't beat that. Our but this, yeah, this bike trail runs along the entire river. Um, it's kind of broken up, so it doesn't run along the whole river from end to end of the river. Um, it's in kind of pieces but they're trying to join it all up. There's actually a multi-billion dollar plan to restore um, the habitat of the river, um, bring a lot of the river banks back. They're gonna have to keep the concrete because that's what protects us from the flooding, um, but they're gonna terrace it, I think, um, and they're going to um, create parks kind of along the root of the river. They're gonna try to buy up, the city's buying up property or the county, it might even be the state in some places are buying up property and they are um, uh, kind of putting in parks along the way and extending the bike trail or linking up all the individual bike trails together from the San Fernando Valley all the way down to Long Beach. And I have to say, we actually went a long way on this trail. Um, we went all the way to um, the area just uh, by, by Glendale. Um, and um, that was a pretty, you know, when you when you get in a car and you drive that length, it seems like a long way, doesn't it? Yeah. But on the trail, it didn't really seem like it was that far. So I think you could probably ride from the San Fernando Valley to downtown on that trail in a pretty good clip of time. So on the left-hand side, that is the 5 freeway. Um, when, when we were doing this ride, our intention was to link Frogtown to something else. So if you were coming here as a visitor, you would have something to do on each end of the ride, right? So we actually ended, not only did we end at Griffith Park, which there's a lot of things to do in Griffith Park, but um, we ended at the Carrollwood Barn, which is the Disney, which is a, which is a kind of a um, museum, a museum of, of Disney history. So, you know, Disney yeah. started obviously here in Hollywood, has started his career in filmmaking here in Hollywood. So um, there is, um, there is a small museum, it's a very small museum, and it wasn't, unfortunately, it wasn't open when we did this episode, um, when we filmed the episode, but um, there's some really cool things in there I saw on um, online. Um, I think if you're a Disney fan, it would be kind of a great, even if you're not a Disney fan, it'd probably be a great <coughs> thing to go, just to go see. Well, it, you said it's a barn? No, it's called the Carrollwood Barn. Oh, the Carrollwood, it's called. That's the name of it, but it's a, basically, it's a museum. 
right next to the Carrollwood Barn is the museum that you were talking about, and it's the Travel Town Museum. Travel Town. And they have all kinds of trains there, so it's really all about <coughs> celebrating train tra train um, train travel and the train experience. And LA, of course, has a very storied history with trains. We're probably one of the most important cities in the world uh, related to trains. We actually had the largest mass transit system in the world at one time, which is the Pacific Electric, which we'll talk about in another episode. But um, uh, or. You can know a little bit more about it on our virtual tour. That's right. We actually go into it on our virtual tour, the Hollywood movie experience. We, there was this guy that was kind of creeping us out initially when we were doing our filming. He kept following us. And, um, uh, and then finally, he, I guess he got a little bit uh, brave and he started to talk to us and we found out it was actually a great opportunity for us now when we were started to do this process you know we were thinking you know we would be just um be boosters of you know kind of boosters of the city and kind of showing all the great things but then we started to realize that um when this guy approached us and he told us a story that you know, there might be a social justice angle to some of the stuff that we do because you know uh things like the LA River Bike Trail, as wonderful as they are, um, are kind of catalyst to kind of changing the neighborhood and in some ways bringing in gentrification, <laughs> right? And yeah. there's, so there's an impact to that. Um, there's, it's great to see all this change, this positive change, but with along with that comes sometimes fear, resentment, um, and, uh, and so forth by people who've been living there for a long time, right? So this gentleman has been living in Frogtown for a long time, and um, he's very afraid that uh, all that's going on there is going to going to make basically push him out of the neighborhood. Yeah. So we we took the opportunity to listen to his story, and uh, it ended up being, I think, uh, a very important part of what we want to talk to you about, and that is, um, you know, some of the things that are going on the in Los Angeles um, that are not always great things. Um, well. They're great things with regards to development, but of course, with development, you also have a change in pricing, and that's what he's, and that's what Tony meant about um, he may be pushed out, not pushed out physically, but uh, priced out of his out of his neighborhood because, you know, with the G, with the say that. Gent gentrification with the gent gentrification 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 uh you know rent prices are going to go up you have new people coming in with money mm, you saw some of the condos or apartments <coughs> that are going in those yeah. are not cheap they're not cheap and it's going to um push lower income out and that's what he's afraid of my name is robert i'm a long time resident of uh, elysian valley and I am concerned about the uh, gentrification that's taking place in the Elysian Valley. You're standing here next to the LA River. It used to be a river. Right now it's a flood control channel. And uh, on or about uh, 2005, the uh, state of California recommended uh, this river or channel as a wildlife refuge. That was uh, subtly rejected by the powers to be uh, in favor of what they called uh, a real a Los Angeles River Master Plan, which essentially was uh, an excuse to promote real estate development instead of uh, promoting the area as a wildlife refuge. Uh, as time goes on, we have less wildlife and more development. Um, mixed use, condos, uh, it's, they're promoting uh, the incentivizing real estate development for people outside at the expense of the long-time residents or at the expense of the community, which is happening 
in all areas that's going through gentrification. High income people move in, lower income people move out. It's called revenue uh, capture. Yeah, so we, we headed over to a park um, while we were there as well, Lewis McAdams Park, which is named after the famous poet, Lewis McAdams. And um, Michael, Michael and I met um, our former employee, Mike Songson, otherwise known as Mike the Poet. Mike the Poet. So Mike, Mike's relationship with Lewis McAdams is he's also a poet. So he actually got to meet Lewis McAdams and develop a relationship with him. And so we thought, you know, what a great thing to bring Mike into this and tell, uh, um, tell us a little bit about Lewis McAdams and also uh, maybe um, recite some of his beautiful poetry. Yeah, and Lewis McAdams wasn't just a poet, but he was also very much into social justice. Which ties into some of the stuff that we're talking about now, right? Yeah. So um, we, we asked Mike to uh, choose um, a, a piece of work by, a, po a poem by um, uh, Lewis McAdams that was appropriate for this episode. And I think he chose a beautiful, um, a, a beautiful um, po poem and he's actually gonna recite it for us now. Yeah. So, take it away, Mike. In the early 1980s, Lewis McAdams was a part of a group of artists, and there was a time where the punk rock scene, the performance art scene, and the poetry scene of Los Angeles was all cross-pollinating in downtown LA in the early 80s. Lewis McAdams was at an event near the Arts District, right next to where the river is, and he looked over the fence and saw the Los Angeles River and didn't know quite what it was, and asked somebody, hey, what's that? And they said, oh, that's the Los Angeles River. And at that moment in time, it really struck a chord with Lewis because he lived most of the 1970s in a city called Bolinas, which is in Northern California, just north of San Francisco in Marin County. And it's this kind of desolate little ocean town. The funny thing about Bolinas is people actually remove the on-ramp, the, the, the freeway signs to it because they don't want people to go there. They will even pull the signs down because they, they want to keep Bolinas a little bit more unknown. But uh, Bolinas in the 70s was filled with environmentalists, hippies, activists, poets. And there had been an oil spill in Bolinas in the early 1970s, and Lewis had been a part of the cleanup efforts. And so he became very political and very much an environmental activist years ago. As a matter of fact, Gary Snyder, who's, uh, who wrote the book Turtle Island, which won the Pulitzer Prize, Gary Snyder was very much a very famous environmental activist. Gary Snyder was one of Lewis McAdams' mentors. But Lewis found out the history of the LA River and as he started studying it, he started you know, going further and further and further down the rabbit hole. He decided that he wanted to be a part of the restoration of the Los Angeles River. So he started a group called the Friends of the Los Angeles River, and he called it a 40-year performance art piece. And it, you know, here we are about 35 years later, 35, 36 years after the fact, and there's been a, quite a bit of progress. The river is now considered a navigable waterway. We just saw some people out here kayaking a few minutes ago, um, but now they have these pocket parks. And little by little, the restoration of the Los Angeles River has begun. But it really began with a man doing poetry. And uh, from this book, Dear Oxygen, there is a cycle of poems that's close to 75, 80 pages long, all about the Los Angeles River. And um, I'm going to read a little bit of it. There are steelhead. We don't like to look backwards. Now there are railroad tracks on both banks of the river, two freeway bridges, the 110 and the 5 cross it. Through a tunnel where somebody is sleeping on a gray mattress in a torch VW van, the Arroyo meekly flows. Cement will turn back into sand someday. Today there's 30 guys with jackhammers leveling the pavement ahead of an airport runway paving machine. It makes an unholy noise so we address ourselves to the river. We ask if we can speak on its behalf in the human realm. We can't hear the river saying no, so we get to work. I sing of a river dammed, dumped, pumped, and diverted. I sing of a river they almost murdered. I sing of a river the people forgot. I sing of a river that flows from the rocks. I sing of a river rushing from mountain slopes, snow melt below Mount Wilson, the mouth of the Arroyo. I sing of a river where the shifting bottom of soft, sets, soft sedimentary sandstones and clay mixes with gravel wash from seasonal runoff. I sing of a river less celebrated than world, worldly waters, but still powerful enough to wash away a village. 
I sing of a river that switched beds, underground moisture in the watershed. I sing of a river where much of the water never reaches the sea, forming marshes, lagoons, and mudflats. I sing of a river with a huge underground reservoir beneath the San Fernando Valley. I sing of a river that built this city. I sing of a river that provided life for the Tongva tribe, later to be called Gabrielinos. They lived amidst the willows, edible berries, and sycamore trees. I sing of a river where steelhead were hunted by grizzlies. I sing of a river with an archipelago of birds, insects, and tiny green particles, foam bubbles, towering power lines, cottonwood trees, tadpoles, and morning frogs. I sing of a river where pelican songs echo off canyon walls. I sing of a river unknown to many, perhaps first seen in Greece of the Terminator. I sing of a river that's always been here. I sing of a river with tributaries like the Rio Hondo. I sing of a river with a confluence in the Arroyo Seco. I sing of a river weaving through crossroads of freight rails and intersecting freeways. I sing of a river below Metrolink and Gold Line trains. I sing of a river with a bevy of bridges. Merrill Butler built iconic bridges in the city beautiful tradition. I sing of a river where 44 pobladores established the Pueblo of Los Angeles in 1781 at the confluence in the name of Spain and King Carlos III. I sing of a river that was here long before SIG alerts. I sing of a river built before concrete, squatter camps and floating cans of beer. I sing of a river paved in concrete by the Army Corps of Engineers. I sing of a river re resurrected one pocket park at a time. Blades of grass breaking through concrete, riparian wetlands in the Compton Creek, oleanders and Atwater reinstate the native garden. Lewis McAdams founded the Friends of the Los Angeles River with the power of the word. Like John Kinsella says, poems can stop bulldozers. I sing of a river where wetlands and washes once dominated. Witness the return of the watershed. So I think that was a great choice by Mike, that, po that poem that we just heard. And, um, and then the setting behind him, if you didn't notice, is the kind of community center that's in Lewis McAdams Park and that's beautiful, that beautiful gate. Isn't that gate gorgeous? Yeah. Uh, that it kind of incorporates the wildlife of the river into the gate and the mountains in the background and uh, just elements of the river. It's really, um, it's stunningly beautiful. And you would not know this you would not see this unless you were actually on the bike trail. I mean, really, the, the entrance to the park is from the bike trail that faces the river, which I thought was great because it kind of forces you to experience the river, doesn't it, to enter the park. You don't enter from the street side. You enter it from the, from the river side. And if you're riding your bike, there's a place to park your bike and lock it up so you can go enjoy the park. Maybe you can have lunch there or breakfast or maybe a picnic dinner. Uh, in the park and then get back on your bike and continue on. Yeah. And Mike also read what, read off one of his poems as well. And he has a book that we're selling on our, on our website as well. Yeah, so if you go to our shop on our website, um, you'll be able to see a lot of great um, product there. And one of them is Mike's book. Mike, yeah, Mike Song, Songson, Mike the Poet. Yeah, so Mike's book is uh, Letters to My City. Um, and you can actually buy it. If you go down to the comments, you'll see uh, a link to our, our store and you can, um, you can actually pick up the book there. It's, really, it's a really great book. Yeah. We ended our day going to, we can kind of get in late afternoon and um, who in their right mind in Los Angeles would pass up a taco stand, right? <laughs> not you. No, not me. <laughs> so um, they happened to be just setting up for the evening that was uh, Frogtown Gourmet Tacos. You can actually find their information in the comments below. We ended up actually getting a couple tacos and sitting by the river there and uh, enjoying them. And they were really, really good. I think the key to actually a really good taco in LA, this is just my opinion, is- There's uh, your tacos. Yep. You got three, I got one. Is that important? <laughs> is that important? Why? Why is that important? You got, I got three, you got one. Um, so the, I think the key to really good tacos in Los Angeles is the tortilla. I mean, you really have to make it on the spot. So they actually, they made the tortillas there. You'll see them. Um, they actually um, take the masa and they actually make the tortillas right there on the spot. Well, they press them. Yeah. What you get trying first? Well, this is the, this is the, the birria. birria. 
birria taco. Oh my god. Is it good? And that tortilla. Ooh. So that was our visit to the LA Bike Trail and Frogtown. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'll um, we'll probably revisit it again at a later date. Um, since when we filmed this, it was it was during COVID. Um, we'll we'll revisit it again, and we'll um, hopefully things will be more open on the next on the next time around when we film it. By the way, when we do a neighborhood, we may do it. We may do it multiple times, and we also. Um, Kind of re, uh, kind of refresh some of these visits because of course as time goes on things change right. <clears throat> so. Well, not only that, I mean we have to because some of these um, some of these uh, episodes we filmed during the COVID shutdown and now things are like I said things are starting to open up again right. in LA. So there's more exploring that needs to be done with these locations instead of just standing outside and outside of the location and talking about it we <clears throat> will start to have the opportunity to go inside and explore some more. Show you extra, extra little gems from these locations. Absolutely. So thank you for joining us for our, our, our second episode. Um, look forward to seeing you next week. Please like and subscribe. Um, we always appreciate you know, our subscribers. Thank you very much. Bye. See you next time.